Hi everybody, welcome to this session of Film Voyage, uh, powered by White Bird Trails. And today we have a very very special guest with us, uh, the one and only Anila Madhav Panda sir, the national award winning filmmaker. He has also been bestowed with the prestigious and uh, coveted Padma Shri award, and he has his films have won him awards the world over, not just in India. He is truly a filmmaker of international repute. somebody who has uh, walked a very different path and uh, that really seems to have made the difference for him and he has been a revolution in a way uh, through his films starting with i am kalam all the way to kadvi hawa leading to halka and now one of his films is also in contention for the oscars welcome to this broadcast neela sir thank you thank you for having me Uh, begin this conversation i would like you to take us back to the early days of your journey as a filmmaker uh, how it all started what was it that got you into this world of storytelling well i think uh, it's a very simple thing as as indian you know we we grew up uh, listening to stories and basically where i grew up i grew up in a uh, village and village is full of stories you know village is full of fears happiness nature and especially in joint families so you know i would i would consider that a, a joint family makes you a better storyteller you know i because i grew up like that so i would consider that also as a, a great part of my life because uh, in a joint family you have it's like uh, mahabharata mahabharata have all kind of characters all kind of emotions so growing up in joint family gives you that kind of strength and later you know when i started my career i started making documentaries and i think documentaries uh, gives me you know now if i go back and see what has uh, i've got to do with documentaries is documentaries gives a lot of strength in terms of storytelling because you see a world which is uh, right there natural you know you try to bring emotions from trees from cows from road from nature i think that gives you you know or uh, uh, that makes you part stronger in terms of storytelling i agree because uh, when you are shooting those documentaries you just have to tell a story you are not dependent on stars you know not dependent on you know any entities but it's the storyteller in you that takes the front seat so um, so while you were making this transition you know after having made these documentaries and after having explored different dimensions of cinematic storytelling what was the biggest challenge in this uh, transition that you were about to take was it the monetary thing was it the creative thing uh, like for, for i i want to ask this question for the benefit of others who want to you know try and follow this path that you have taken you believe in something and you work for that and it happens so even today the path is not that easy you know or mm-hmm. whether monetary or success of a film or making of a film Uh, every film we begin like a uh, it's a it's your first film so uh, neela sir uh, like uh, if we just specifically go to i am kalam uh, i know um, uh, as you rightfully said that there is no set uh, mantra to success there is no set path but if we just focus on i am kalam what was the creative approach that you followed if you could just take us through the steps you know in a nutshell that what was it like how it all began and what all you know happened Uh, because i know because when you are making a film not everything goes as per plans there are things that evolve there are things that you have to adapt to so what was it like in the case of iron kalam look my my films are generally comes from the world i live in the world i had seen mm-hmm. the world i was closer to so mm-hmm. iron kalam mm-hmm. comes from a story i had uh, i was shooting a, a documentary on child labor and documentaries on child labor means all sector of uh, child labor uh, carpet making to bulb making to uh, tenant factory to everywhere to the street beggars and everything so one of the thing of course i mean i live so much with these children so there is it starts evoking you that you have to tell the story to the people and documentary always says a it's a reality it's a limited path of uh, reaching out to audience so i decided that i wanted to have at least one short film to make an interesting film about the child because in documentary you see reality but i can't portray what the child wants or envision to be and in a fiction you can create a lot of characters and make it 
you know, much more interesting, you know, much more entertaining, I would say. So then I had this style in my mind, whom I met in 2001. And it went on for so many years, almost eight, nine years in my mind, when I started thinking of the story. And then I got the writer on board and we started writing it. And so metaphorically, if you see I am Kalam, is uh, there are a lot of representation of age-old, uh, you know, there are many multi-layer things, you know, the prince and pauper or uh, the subjugated people to uh, the independent India to before independence, the Raja Rajwada, everything metaphorically I had given that. Within that, so what I try to say that I could have made it a very dark and stingy sort Absolutely, of thing. Yeah. But my approach, I realized that the world is too tired of looking at the struggle. You know, if you see India struggle from independent struggle to uh, poverty to everything, we're growing up as a country. And that was a in very transition phase we escaped from 1995, to especially our generation who had seen that 10, 15 years, how India started growing fast, you know. And that has to come as a representation to your film. A child can dream to become a president. Okay, so I wanted to make it, I, I, I put some colors into it. I put some interesting characters into it. If you see Gulshan Grover's character or Bhatti's yeah. character, they represent different sets of people, life, communities, you know. And then here is a hero, a guy, a boy, a little boy who comes to sell tea in a shop, becomes your hero. So it was a very interesting script to work with, as well as suiting itself, you know. and. So it was, we saw it in a very romantic and a beautiful place. The palace, the Dhaba, you know, if you see the Kaner itself is very romantic. So I thought that would clearly show what we want, what is our life we want to be, you know, the colors in our life. So I'm Clam represents that very well. But I also, uh, you know, I have always wanted to ask you this question. A lot of the filmmakers, when they want to tell stories, in fact, some of the, you know, uh, most important films, if we look at the world film history, whether we look at 400 Blows, whether we look at Bicycle Thieves, whether we look at some of these Iranian films, a lot of the times they use, you know, a child to show you the world that we live in. And I have always felt uh, as a critic that it must be very, very difficult for filmmakers to handle child actors. So what's the secret mantra behind that? How do you play with child actors and you are able to get them, you know, act, you're, you're able to get them do what you want to do. What is the secret behind that? I would consider it's black and white, either good or bad, you know. So it's how you take it. So for me, children are, I treat as person. So then I don't read that as children, children. So when mm. you treat them as person, they have their own voice and you give that freedom. Mm. It's difficult if you cannot manage. I have been, you know, I love children. I have li- I've lived with them for many years. I have worked with them. So I bring the child. I tell the basic things. And if you see, my children are very vocal. You know, they're like independent. Okay. They rule me more than I rule them, you know, as a director. Okay. No. So it is their voice, what I saw in the film. Okay. So for instance, in I Am Kalam or Halka or any of these films, so they... You know, if I finish shooting, even they never get tired. They want to spend more time with me. So that's how you evoke the story out of them. And what the joy of working with children is, if you see, my film has certain certain sense of, uh, I would say there is a there is always a sense of innocence in all my absolutely, characters. Absolutely, absolutely, okay? And children, nobody else than children can give that kind of sense, you know, as as mm. adult, we come with prejudices, we come with mm. plans, you know, mm. so we have all our agendas and plans, even when we are shooting, but a child doesn't have that. If you allow that space, it is the most easiest thing to work with children. And is there a specific way you break your eyes with these uh, amazing, uh, you know, talents? Like, what is it like when you meet them for the first time? Do you, you know, is there a way that you uh, establish this bond of trust? Or it evolves over a period of time. No, I I glued I glued with children instantly. I don't wow. take time. Okay. So my breaking eyes doesn't take any time. You know, I'm just you know anybody and a child enter, I'll make them comfortable instantly. You know? 
Neela sir, like if I if I ask you to uh, 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 look at your film, you know, at the bigger body of work. If we look at you know starting with I am Kalam to uh, say Karvi Hawa to Halka to your latest uh, Kalari Atita, is there if if I ask you, is there a recurring theme? Is I I sense a sense of a semi autobiographical approach in a lot of your films. Somewhere I feel that this is coming right from your heart because you cannot manifest all these things artificially. if you tell me that okay i am just creating these stories i would not believe it i as you also said at the very beginning that some of it comes from your own your own experiences so when you are handling a issue like this when you are dealing with a body of work that's so strongly autobiographical in nature what are the things that you keep in mind every time you want to tell a story because you will be working with different writers you will be working with different subjects but this inner core this inner self has to be true so any any specific approach that you follow to keep this going every time round that's where the story begins the, the okay. all of my films i have work uh, basic story is mine mm-hmm. that's where mm-hmm. it begins it means there is somewhere i believe in that story the core mm-hmm. the philosophy of the basic story is me mm-hmm. okay? and mm-hmm. it is the urge to tell the story to bring it as a script and then as a film okay and it's still till the time you leave with the story till the time you don't tell if it clasped for me so i start living with that and these are story we i feel as a storyteller which is important to tell to the world okay mm-hmm. and if i don't say that i i won't die before saying it you know so it always comes with a lot of effort because the kind of story i have or the kind of film i wanted to make it is not easy to get support or funding or anything but still you keep doing that so which is why i said i never had a easy journey on any of my film because these are stories which are important which is interesting yet you don't see buyer instantly it takes a long time you know when i finish i am kalam for two years there was no buyer and here it is today one of the most seen uh, film probably in uh, netflix moving on uh, neela sir um... also want you to now take this journey from uh, i am kalam to jalpari now that you have made i am kalam you have made you know your place you have been able to carve a niche you have won awards world over you have won awards in india bollywood is also now noticing you or so to say the industry is now recognizing you but you yet say that it was never easy for you uh, even after having achieved what you achieved with i am kalam and moving on to jalpari was what was the biggest difference before you were about to release the film uh, i am kalam versus your second film jalpari was it a little easy to make a film the film gets a uh, identity people love it uh, the distributor to make you know uh, the film world knows about you it becomes easy but nevertheless still independent film has its own struggle a uh, no independent film is so easy to sell because obviously a star based we are a, we are a country which which is which i mean every country would love a big star big budget film but independent cinema to survive has you know it's few few people who are like me who constantly doing uh, independent cinema and it will always have its struggle you know so today i met kalida atita which is in my odia language itself you know it's not that easy to bring the film out to the public you know it will always be the struggle so it doesn't matter because end of the day also we have to be practical it's not that you could blame anybody anyone for that because a film is a purely a uh, monetary issue you know when you make a film you need money when you distribute a film you need money to reach out to the audience so it's not easy to or uh, somebody to uh, throw their investment easily on an independent cinema that will be always that also want to understand neela sir since you became a huge success uh, in the film world what was it like uh, to go back with your people uh, the from the town that you hail from uh, back in odisha what was it like what was the first time when you went there after having achieved all this success and how were you able to motivate and inspire others i'm just asking you so that this gives a sense of uh, inspiration Give, this give a sense of uh, you know understanding to other people also because through their success they are also paving the way for others to follow that you know at least it's giving them hope and it's also allowing a filmmaker like you to create 
a certain culture you know in the place that you come from which usually doesn't happen can i tell you honestly as an artist uh i mean i'm t- telling you my point of view is that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. biting success is not a easy thing and i'm generally mm-hmm. a shy mm-hmm. person to talk about it you know i always believe that i have made a film let's talk about the film you know i generally don't like to talk about success or anything because as an artist you are never successful because you keep doing that because your your mm. your anger or your need your your fulfilling that space that okay because you still lack of telling more stories you know so that goes on so you feel that okay i made a film it got national award that has make you happy yes it makes you happy but is that success so i do not consider success like that but i believe that for youngster and other people i would say that the first thing comes as a storyteller as an artist is to tell you know my my first documentary i made which is what the beautiful name i gave is called i dare to dream so you dare to do this film if you have dare to dream then you can dare to start up film. coming back to odia cinema yes i mean i have been trying to do something for odia cinemas for a long time and i was not able to do you know it, it is my first feature film as a director i did kalida dito which is in a very independent space and very different sort of genre and it's a film which is almost shot like a dogma film you know there was no script no set no art per se it's just a director who took a team and said that i want to shoot this film and everybody was stunned that there was no script you know this is a film literally developed while i was shooting with the character because there was a documentary i did for 14 years in that place so i knew the sense emotions character of that place so mm-hmm. it was not easy it was not difficult for me but mm-hmm. for other crew to understand mm-hmm. what you're doing was not there you know so they did slowly adapt that so to talk about that in a world of cinema where we are fixed about taking a copy from something or we have a, a bond script and here is a film which you try to take up as very different space altogether i was going through uh, you know some of the discussions that you have had on this film and i really love the poster you know with this hand pump and this person sitting over it uh and you said that you have been to that village you know the place i think it has to do with places getting submerged by by the coastline basically um uh, how difficult was it to sh- for, for you to shoot this what was the biggest challenge while shooting this no, no, it was impossible not difficult <laughs> i yeah. thought so. so we 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 crossed the uh, crocodile uh, infested river you know then the main group plants which is about wildlife and crocodiles and then you walk for 12 kilometers i think 12 kilometers mm. so we had mm. our little gen- generator and we had uh, 60 cots you know village cots which we bought in because it's so independent when you can't buy a lot of stuff and we arrived and everybody looked at here and there where do we stay but that's love for cinema as indian we stay we give our life because it was dangerous i would consider the right word is very dangerous to be in that place and shoot it's not a documentary it's a fiction so you need a bigger crew because there was obviously you need some light reflectors you know if you have uh, 30 people there are five six people you need to provide water or food so crew we come 50 70 people you know and it was and there were days where the supplies was not there so in the nearby water log water log we used to go for fishing and get fish to eat you know so it is literally that kind of a space to shoot and i don't know i can do that ever in my life anymore or not bit because but this was my most daring film i have ever done and for everybody in the wow. world and there's a lot of uh, you know truths attached to it the stories are all real uh, so when you're following this dogma approach you are trying to do, do this hybrid you know the elements are very very documentary and yet you are trying to attempt fiction do you have any references when you do this now honestly it's not only this film from my first film itself when i start conceiving a story and wanted to work on the film i stop reading books i stop watching cinema so that it doesn't no mm-hmm. scenes or things can influence me 
and this wow. particular cinema wow. too you forget it because in the place we were there was no phone calls also there was no uh, mobile signal mm. at all none of us were reachable mm. so to mm. reach you know we had to go literally another 1 km to get little signal to mm. talk so it was mm. literally a space mm. where mm. you know mm. you are in a no man's land to tell a story mm. without technology mm. except the mm. camera and little bit of lights you now and uh, neela so this film is set to be in the oscar race so can you throw a little light on that because there has been some confusion over that that because now the oscar nominations are going to be announced in a day or two so if you could tell us like what how does it work in general entry category if you believe in your film then you have to spend certain amount make an entry you make that eligible once it is eligible then they because this year was a digital process it is available in the academy screening room in the academy screening room they share with all their jury members which is so 550 jury member across the globe i think i don't know the details but it spreads around that now here's the difference when i make a film enter to apply cars or bean or national award or fee at it is a post jury member who watches the film and decides if this we can take or not in a general category entry we send the film and we start campaigning when you campaign the film mm. it basically to reach out to those jury and to say that look i made a film it's a interesting film you must see that's why you campaign but when you send a film to berlin you don't campaign because it's a close room thing here you do a open campaign which is why it's called race so in the race you basically mm. campaign for the film so that your words ke ho to the jury members as well it's very simple thank you so much uh, neela sir for clarifying that because there was some confusion about that and i should that i thought that you know now that we have you we should address that as well but uh, now i want to come to a very important facet of your film making which is environment uh, you know your love for nature your love for environment and also you know you are always constantly questioning like uh, when i watched kadvi hawa i remember i i was at the ifi and i was totally you know transported and it really gave me jitters and I, when the movie ended you know i found it hard to even step out of the cinema hall because i could feel that weight from where it came so want to understand uh, how does this come to you i understand the autobiographical part i understand your conscious efforts to make it you know this this new kind of cinema wherein you are also telling something that's socially relevant but what is this uh, this this recurring theme of environment in your films uh, from where does it come does it also have to do with your early days uh, you know or it is what you have seen around you over the years and that has made you take up this conscious choice of trying to make your films spreading awareness about these issues well i i'm you know you have to realize that i'm not a activist or a, i don't make Mm-hmm. just so say so mm-hmm. like i said mm-hmm. it is something affects me and i make make it work <clears throat> like i always say that i grew up in a village where we were not dependent on the outside world we were what we were mm-hmm. a river trees mm-hmm. kit kalyan our own food our own world when i started growing up started traveling i realized that the world is growing fast but the ecosystem i lived in what i had seen the ecosystem is not there if i see mm. in bombay mm. Mm. and calculate the natural resources that this much of human being how much tea you have how much natural resource of water you have living in delhi we have started buying oxygen itself you know so it's like every household needs a air filter now when you see these growing up from childhood to adult to a responsible artist you feel that there are things which are lack behind and people don't know the stories i wanted to tell those stories so if you see kon kitne paani mein is about war mm. on water which the world is saying that the next war will be on water than petrol or uh, petroleum products then you see kadvi hawa is extreme weather conditions so there is place which has lot of water place which has no water Kali Ratita is about future, about the impact of climate change. So I started talking stories which is happening to the world. So I found it's an important time to tell these stories. 
<clears throat> but do you also feel sir when you make a certain kind of cinema like if you are just focusing on environment uh, a lot of the commercial people you know commercial they make your life difficult every time you want to release a new film how do you fight that i don't think you know you should say that because mm-hmm. we have to understand that mm-hmm. even to make a a uh, stereotype film comedy film romantic film every film there are a lot of effort goes there somebody's hard earned mm. investment goes so they have absolutely to do that. and of course our films have le- lesser investment but uh, not not really that you know i get also a lot of support to release the film there are a lot of people okay. who comes okay. and support my films i think uh, that is uh, very important for any filmmaker and which leads me to the next question which is slightly stepping stepping away from just discussing your films to look at the bigger picture uh, if i ask you since you have been in the industry uh, to you know lay down the over structure how does the film business work like for a layman i know that okay you are making a film you start with a script and you create a film but what about the film business how does it work the film business are changing you know in time you know if you see now okay. post covid mm-hmm. the whole mm-hmm. ott platforms and everything is increasing mm-hmm. and of course mm-hmm. in my film also if you see out of my seven films there are three films in uh, netflix there are films in c5 and other platforms also so how it works Amazon is also. you know now yeah now theatrically you don't have you know for films like us theatrically you don't have a great income surely mm-hmm. and then you depend on mm-hmm. television rights and ott rights mm. and all that and mm. now probably i would see it will be easier for uh, for a while at least for independent films that you make of film and there are digital uh, there are ott platforms who are waiting to buy if you make a good quality film so that way i think it's working well now for independent filmmakers and it's a great time to make films because the films also not so expensive people are ready to support for good cinema understand good cinemas so i think we are going through a good time in terms of independent films neela sir also uh, do tell us a little about um, uh, halka because that's another interesting film uh, you know which i really like talking about uh, because it deals with the all important issue of swachh bharat swachhta so to say because this is a very important issue and a lot of filmmakers have tackled it but when you uh, wanted to tackle it you again chose a very different sport Uh, you know uh, approach again using a child to tell, tell your story bringing all that innocence into it so tell the story of uh, the the how did you uh, uh, basically coin that idea because a lot of other films were also dealing with swachh bharat and yet here were you again following a very independent approach in telling a very relevant story see my my story started with a very interesting path you know if you see slum dwellers okay as as people we say that oh these are encroachers why wow, are these people here they are dirty people you don't realize that without them your city cannot run even half a day yet they clean your toilets they come cook for you they clean your roads they build your buildings they paint your house do we realize that they also need a clean place we don't so i try to bring that through a innocence of a child who doesn't find it comfortable to go for a open defecation i had that in my village myself okay i don't like to take out my pant as a child even in front of others or in open space i want to see pooing is such a important thing that you know it's poo but you want to be you know clean place there's a very basic threat about that child but as a civilized people do we realize that that how important is that for that child itself how important is that like my from my childhood wherever i grew up in a village also but to have a clean shirt to have a clean hand so this is very basic core and today of course it it transform into a big campaign at bharat swachhta abhiyan which is fantastic you know that's where we are changing and a lot of etiquettes of women behavior are changing which is great i wanted to toss that basic core of a child of a society where they live mm-hmm. what they live you might have a big ambani's house 
you might have a nice 3 bhk flat i might have a flat but they also have a space their own space is also very neat and clean where they live and the sense of cleanliness of the child i wanted to bring that through that story which is again a, you know in a very difficult circumstances we saw because five children in slum in dirty places it was really tough new i even i was wondering how to get because it was a very small place getting your crew inside it getting your camera you know to move around the axis it must have been very very challenging to yeah. uh, uh, get the mizon sen right to get the framing right to get those camera fluid camera movements and yet you were able to do it in a very effective and an efficient way no it it isn't easy for that you know you know that 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 is one part which is very difficult like in kalida atita also there was a scene which is mm-hmm. almost like a 7 7 and a half minute amazing scene you know continuously and imagine with tough thing where the sea has to come in right time which has used to come in right time she has to run at the right time it took me 3 days to shoot just one scene you know interesting very very interesting um also sir for the benefit of you know the young filmmakers or young storytellers i want to understand what is the usual conversation that you have with your screen writers and what is the usual conversations that you have with your actors and dops uh, like just like how do you brief them how do you get into their minds how do you listen to them i it need not be very structured but thoda sa if you could just tell us ki kis tarah ki baat chit rehti hai with your screen writer with your actors how do you get them focused how you get them you know aligned well i think it's it's not tough it's very simple that mm-hmm. anybody to bring a actor to bring a crew member a you have to believe in the person that this guy can do but the second biggest problem comes is whether it's a dop and for me i go to the level of uh, sport boys as well i make mm-hmm. them believe that what i'm doing is very important mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. make them believe that it is as important for me it is important for you also so mm-hmm. once you sell that it becomes easier for them to be in your fold to be in the story's fold so there's nobody in you know, a film set nobody can be bigger than a cinema the film you are doing the film itself is absolutely big. neither the director absolutely. or any crew member is big so thankfully i have been lucky to have that kind of crew people to make my films happen the they believe in my dream as well ultimately they believe in the cinemas you know like we say cinema is actually cinema is distinct you know because from a level of thought to script to shooting to edit to music it's a long journey so every crew member has to be strongly part of that journey they believe in So Neil sir now that we have moved into a very very digital era i'm sure you must be getting approached by a lot of young filmmakers a lot of young writers must be getting in touch with you trying to pitch their stories trying to work under you what's your advice to these young people how do they can you know uh, etch out a career for themselves maybe you know as as a screen writer or as a filmmaker as a dop what's your advice to them well it's it's i think it's it's very simple i always say you know everybody you know whether dop writer anybody they all are story teller okay and mm-hmm. if you believe in yourself that you can do that cinema today is that that it's very easy if you want to do it it can be possible today the time we came in in 95 and 97 there was no google no youtube no technology it's very difficult to reach out to a person you know i can tweet somebody and reach out in 30 seconds but you know today you know uh, you know the most important thing you should know your art and you should be confident about it patience perseverance are the words not just words but they are very important as a film in filmmaker's life mm-hmm. and it's a long journey it doesn't happen overnight of course now it's easier you know when i do make stars you know somebody make a viral video and they become stars also so it's not that difficult today so it's just i would say consider that you know you have to believe in yourself that's it that's all you need sir i also um, needed to you know ask you because you have been um, you know making films even in the covid times what was it like you know for you as a filmmaker during this long 
a lockdown pandemic and how do you see this is going to impact the world of movies going forth well, i think we all had a long suffering you know it's it's not been easy mm. for anybody you know mm. so from mm. filmmakers to other business to our children to everybody has suffered through that and i would say that we are still figuring out we still don't know mm. what was the actual impact we're mm. just selling through the time and of course i mean as human i would i'm very optimistic i think as human i would say that we will fight it back we'll come out the, the theaters will open fully you know people will start going to theater everything will happen but uh, as human i think this was the toughest time so i can't answer that now because we're still going through that pandemic period you know hopefully in 2 3 months everybody will be vaccinated mm. and we'll come out of it mm. but the shock of so it what, is still there you know? mm. indeed it is but what kept you busy were you making this film uh, or were you writing some new screen plays or you were working on some post for your upcoming projects what was it like for you i had both i had a lot of time to spend with my son and uh, of course i had a, a ending book which i had to finish so i could finish my book and also there was a series which i was writing so that helped me the those time helped me a lot in terms of doing research and stuff for my series as well neela sir also you know um, there is a big issue of ethics going around these days uh, and there is also a big issue of self censorship because we talked about ott we talked about how web has given freedom and it's really changing the paradigms but as a storyteller there is a line you know that needs to be drawn and there is a case of self censorship there is a case of you know a government trying to come up with certain guidelines so where do you draw the line as a storyteller it's fine everybody has the freedom of speech but at the same time you know india is a very vast country there has to be certain mm-hmm. ethics certain sensibility you should always mm-hmm. carry on you know and i think any government will try and do that because you know it's not a small country where you could do anything it's a large country you know there's so many languages so many things you have and so the country you know government always will come with certain rules and you can always have a dialogue but i would believe in that you know that's how you have a, you have a sense of both you don't have that freedom to do anything and everything you know mm-hmm. so ott mm-hmm. needs also that kind of for guidelines and as a storyteller you feel that it is the moral responsibility uh, even if there are no guidelines to follow a certain approach because you know what has happened with ott what we have seen is that there is a lot of excess you know if they want to go with cuss words then they will go with cuss words there will be a lot of violence there will be a lot of nudity do you really feel that as a storyteller uh, we should also be a little responsible or do you feel as a storyteller uh, we should just leave it to the guidelines we should just leave it to the cbfc because in your film i have seen that you obviously exercise a lot of control and nobody has ever questioned you in that regard but obviously as somebody who has uh, been a part of the industry what what is your views at large i would certainly say that we should have our own sensibility towards that because your story mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. going to be watched by millions of people okay so it's not just mm-hmm. your story mm-hmm. it is story of people mm-hmm. so if my film mm-hmm. tomorrow there are 3 million people watching i better be conscious about that i just can't tell anything you know mm-hmm. like that so it is very important mm-hmm. that there has to be a self consciousness as a storyteller Neela sir, thank you so much for taking the time out. And I, on behalf of uh, White Bird Trails, uh, would like to thank you. And uh, it's been really wonderful listening to your thoughts. And this conversation for me personally has been most enlightening. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you. Thank you so All much right. for having me.